am happy to be joined with Elias Theodoro. Uh, first off, big congrats. Uh, how are you? And uh, needless to say, a big victory uh, over the weekend in your latest fight. No, thanks so much. And thank you for having me. Um, yeah, no, couldn't be more excited. Obviously, uh, you know, a lot of hard work uh, went into it, uh, even more so with, you know, just COVID and you know, how everyone's been kind of dealing with uh, the yeah. aspect of, you know, plans being delayed. But, uh, you know, it was worth the wait and uh, it definitely worked out even better than I expected. Yeah. Well, the reason why we wanted to have you on here today, and it's, you know, made news, obviously, all over North America. You're considered the first professional athlete to compete in North America with a therapeutic use exemption for medical cannabis. Made history with the victory over fellow UFC veteran Matt Dwyer at uh, RFC 6 uh, over this past weekend. So why did you seek this medical cannabis exemption? And what does it mean, I guess, uh, when you're training for a fight? Yeah, well, first, it's my fundamental right as a Canadian to Medicaid is prescribed by my doctor. And that's what I have been fighting for for the last four or five years. When I was with the UFC, it was an uphill battle because they are a U.S. company and yeah. they don't have one medical rights and they don't have medical cannabis rights. So uh, no longer with the UFC and a free agent, I'm able to be an agent of change, not only for myself, but other athletes as I, uh, you know, fight for uh, medical equality. And that's what I was able to get approved back in February 2020 yeah. um, with my therapeutic use exemption. And again, it's afforded to me by my writer, my Charter of Rights and Freedom. And uh, now moving forward, uh, because of the precedent that I set in British Columbia, no athlete in boxing or MMA, amateur professional, uh, will have to go through the same hurdles and trials and tribulations that I did to have to get their medical cannabis approved if warranted. And uh, further than that, because of the, the way that all of the um, the con uh, all of the commissions work with each other. This will actually open the door, not just in BC, but all of North America. Yeah. And that's what I plan on doing after this. What's this mean to you? It's a big, big uh, moment, right? Yeah, it means everything. Uh, again, um, obviously a fighter who, uh, you know, is set on winning, uh, you know, in yeah. the cage, but uh, I've been kind of set for the latter part of, uh, you know, four years, five years, as I mentioned, fighting outside of the cage and, yeah. um, you know, just the alternatives and the, the process that I had to go through, uh, essentially exhausting all ever types of uh, medication just to prove that cannabis was the better choice. And it was something that my doctor uh, was just scratching his head. And, uh, you know, what I had many doctors help me out through this because, uh, again, it was a it was a process. Um, you know, uh, the original doctor that I was working with is my um, my actual lifelong med medical practitioner. He's been my family doctor since I, uh, before I can even remember. So um, he was just scratching his head because again, the outdated uh, process that they had was you have to essentially do every single drug that is on the list is that it's approved right. before you can come back to what works. <laughs> so they had me taking addictive opioids. They had to take, uh, taking, uh, you know, detrimental uh, painkillers that, you know, not only affected me as a patient, but also as an athlete, because yeah, those sure. are two different hats. Those are two different hats that I wear. Uh, and I, you know, a, a top level athlete that is, uh, you know, that has to compete at his best pretty much, you know, every single day, but at the same time, a patient who now has medical needs that are, you know, being conflicted with the fact that I'm a patient and because of, you know, the outdated mindset that, and, and, and protocols that, uh, you know, both essentially uh, the U S and Japan uh, kind of dictate to the rest of uh, the world, um, Canada, uh, you know, in the, uh, as part of the world's anti-doping agency, yep. uh, CCS has been trying to get cannabis removed from the prohibit list for quite some time. And, uh, you know, U S and Japan, have basically shrugged them off. So um, kind of digressing a little bit, but kind of elaborating at the same time, when I was with the UFC, the United States Anti-Doping Agency gets all of their um, funding from the US government that still looks at cannabis as a schedule one drug, which yeah. means that there's no, which means that there's no um, medical properties under their, you know, under their viewing, I guess, um, which is again, backwards because they agreed because I showed all the paperwork that I have my medical condition, which yeah. is my lateral neuropathy. It's essentially nerve damage of my upper extremities. Yeah. And I'm asking to use cannabis as a pain management tool or they, a pain management medicine. And they won't, we wouldn't, they wouldn't even consider it. it. Hmm. No, it was basically no. Uh, and here's why. And I kept on shrinking the nose and here's why every time I would resubmit. Um, but again, the big hurdle was they get funded by the U S government. It doesn't look at like cannabis yeah. as a it doesn't look at cannabis as a metal, uh, medicine in any way, shape, or form. 
But now um, being able to apply in BC and getting approved yeah. because of a commission again, and beyond even the, the sport component, there's something even bigger that I think that is sometimes missed. Um, the commission is run by the BC government. Yep. So this means this is the first time the government or any government has recognized cannabis as a medicine in sport. So mm -hmm. this is even bigger than sport. This is another actual foundation of medical cannabis rights that all uh, Canadians get to exercise and uh, you know validate and uh, use in their own precedent moving forward. Well, I'll be curious to see, you know, there's been a lot of talk about decriminalization in the U.S. and removing cannabis from a Schedule One drug with this MORE Act and the Democrats potentially passing this through the Senate this year. In the event that were to happen, um, maybe play it out. Like, where do you think the landscape will go, not only in Canada, but in North America? And does this open the door uh, rapidly for uh, more and more athletes being uh, obviously exempt with uh, medical cannabis? Unfortunately for them, again, it's the process and seeing if this eventually becomes decriminalized or and then you know moves to the states or becomes federally recognized. Yeah. Then then the, the 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 barrier in regards to medicine. But unfortunately, at the moment, no one else can really argue it in the same way that I can. Um, and with that note, I, I mentioned it in my um, documentary that kind of aired before my fight. But yeah. I have applied for a therapeutic use exemption in California. Okay. And I'm waiting for that process. So. Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, my, my council has been talking to the, um, the commission of California government, uh, the California state athletic commission, and they've been a, a great, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, party that has been working, uh, in, in, in throughout the whole process with yeah. my, um, council. And I should have an answer in the next little bit. And again, this will create precedent, not only for myself, but other athletes to use it in a way that they wouldn't be able to do it. Because again, unfortunately in the U S there isn't medical cannabis rights and there's not even medical rights more broadly, because again, it's a private, uh, yeah. you know, uh private product, I guess there, which yeah. again, I believe in clean sport and I believe that, uh, you know, healthcare is a fundamental right. And, uh, I'm trying to share that in any way I can, but the interesting thing that happens now because of all the commissions, they work with each other in congruency. What ends up happening is I no longer have to argue medical cannabis rights. I basically have to argue, I basically have to say, BC government said this works for me. And now why do you say this doesn't work for me? Why are they wrong? So yeah. it kind of flips it a little bit and it will make it a little bit easier. Um, I, again, I'm very thankful for the British Columbia Athletic Commission. I'm very, uh, for accepting my therapeutic use exemption. And I'm also very thankful for the um, California Athletic Commission for hearing my case. And hopefully uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks, if not months, uh, they will also approve and validate my therapeutic use exemption. And again, uh, this is just the beginning. I only fight Great. in jurisdictions that respect my fundamental right to Medicaid as both patient and athlete. Good for you, brother. That's got to feel good, huh? Uh, it, it's, you know, it, it, it does feel good, um, obviously. It's been a long process and I've gotten many no's uh, along the way, but I, I wasn't deterred. I wasn't uh, wavered and uh, very thankful for the, the great team, yeah. both in regards to my, again, coaches, training partners, and yeah. also, uh, you know, counsel and doctors uh, from uh, my family doctor to Dr. Michael Hart to, again, my also my pain management uh, uh, specialist, Dr. Kevin Rod at the Poly Clinic. It takes, a, you know, an army to kind of get ready for war. And I couldn't uh, be yeah. more thankful for my uh, my coaches, training partners, and medical professionals and counsel that have you know really uh, worked with me throughout this whole process. Well, when I see like the support level, you're part of a program called Athletes for Care, and it's basically athletes advocating for plant based medicines in addition to cannabis, also psychedelics. Some notable names include the likes of Ray Lewis, Kevin Love, Dan Carcillo, Mike Tyson. Um, have you gotten much feedback from, I guess, uh, the group of athletes and what's the, I guess, um, some of the, I guess, support that you're getting, uh, amongst other notable names, considering that, you know, you had a big fight over the weekend and the success that you have. Well, again, it's been a, a privilege uh, to be a part of athletes for care for quite some time now. Um, obviously, uh, before COVID, there were a lot more events that we were able to not only network, uh, what's it called, uh, you know, in general, more broadly, but yep. also in person uh, together and looking forward to that starting to pick up once some normalcy returns uh, and hopefully sooner rather than later. But again, being able to, uh, you know, connect with many different athletes, both past, present and uh, potentially future uh, that again, can lean on each other for different aspects from the, uh, the you know, the um, 
uh, everything that kind of encompasses uh, just being an athlete, whether it was stigmas of the past, stigmas that currently stand, or any other types of, uh, you know, trials and tribulations that we all have to fight with our own battle. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, I obviously come from an individual sport, but yep. uh, just like with uh, many other sports, and even like I mentioned, you know, what it takes to compete, um, it takes a team. And I couldn't be more thankful to be a part of uh, the Athletes for Care team. Are you hearing any other uh, feedback from other athletes and other sports, knowing that the momentum is starting to build uh, in light of obviously what it was accomplished over the weekend? Yeah, no, even leading up to this. And obviously, again, um, one, you know, we've seen more and more sports uh, at the very least not testing for it. Um, I think the, the another caveat with mine is it's still tests for cannabis. And Lord knows there's going to be a lot of cannabis in my system. But uh, <laughs> that is allowed. Uh, that is allowed to be uh, normally. Yeah. Uh, it's about 150 nanograms, uh, where I'm probably 10 folds of that to, to be completely yeah, honest at yeah. any given time, <laughs> but, but point being, um, uh, with that, my medicines no longer, uh, you know, held against me. And I, I know right. other athletes that I've, that I've trained with, for instance, in MMA that, um, you know, had one, I, I think, uh, again, it's about one, 150 normally, but a, a, a training partner of mine had 125 or, or sorry, 150, 160. And then their threshold was 125 for whatever reason. Yeah. So his win, his win, his championship win was overturned. He was suspended. Uh, he lost half of his pay as a, as a fine and, and not having the win. Uh, and again, he was suspended for, it was nine months, but because he admitted uh, he did this horrible thing and, you know, the stigma that comes, uh, you know, with being classified as a cheater, even though you're just using cannabis. And again, he did a private test. Um, one of the people, one of the things that people don't realize is that the, the standard of test is kind of standard for all, but that means 125 female fighter and a 265 male fighter all get tested the same. Right. When in reality, it, it's a lot more complex than that. Um, my, my, my friend that I was mentioning, he did a private test, uh, cause he had to pay for everything, uh, to kind of, uh, you know, prove his case or yeah. trying to get leniency, et cetera, et cetera stayed in his body for 81 days. Wow. 81 days. How does a joint 81 days for anxiety have any bearing on a fight you had 81 days later? It 81 did, it, again, days. Wow. 81 days. Uh, Cause the threshold was so low and he's a big dude. He's a big dude. He's 260 wow. pounds. He cuts down. And again, it's fat soluble. So it stays in your fat. Yeah. Other, you know, beyond sports, other weird thresholds that they have cops, aren't allowed using it for 41 days. I think it is yeah. um, where um, certain other uh, union workers, it's 28 days I again, but you can, you know, we live in a society where we can get smashed on alcohol a couple of days before, well, or, you know, I, I, I wanted to ask that like athletes obviously go through wear and tear and especially obviously mm -hmm. the sport that you're, uh, you know, you're competing in um, sometimes heavy damage done to the body. But from an athlete's perspective, when it comes to pain relief, what would you say from a mental and physical standpoint is the biggest difference between, say, opioids and other painkillers compared to medical cannabis? The side effects, plain and simple. Yeah. Um, it's the side effects that uh, opioids and other painkillers have. It's the addictive component. It's yeah. the wear it also has on your in insides, not only your outside. Think of the compound damage one does. If I'm getting punched and kicked every single day, and then, for instance, Lyrica. Lyrica is one of the pills that I had to take. Uh, that I had to take, uh, you know, X amount of times a day, um, through my training and I would be bloated, constipated and maybe gain 10 pounds on top of the 15 pounds that I already have to cut for a fight. Um, those are compounded stress. Right. So imagine being bloated in your stomach and my job is literally to get kicked and punched. So every day I got to show up to the gym and get punched in the stomach when I'm completely bloated. It, it, again, it, it's compounded to it where with cannabis, uh, again, with me personally, and again, medicine is a very individual thing. Uh, everyone has to talk to their own doctor, their own professionals, we'll see if it works for them. Um, but for me specifically, it's essentially dry mouth is all I really have uh, yeah. as a negative with cannabis. But I'm so hydrated anyways. I drink about four liters of water a day anyways Good. as an athlete. Yeah. So um, I just can't imagine some of these fighters that have to like cut weight at a specific time. I've seen it before and the challenges that, that they go through some guys losing as much as 15, 20 pounds in one day. And, uh, yeah, to say like you're sitting here and you're bloated, it's, uh, from a mental perspective. And like you said, the side effects, uh, um, a lot of challenges to say the least what they'd have to go through. hundred percent. And the long-term and the long-term damage, right. Uh, whether it's, um, you know, 
the addiction potential. Um, we talked about, uh, you know, just your, your organs, what, what all of that does to your organs over the long run. And for me personally, I vaporize like a professional, like an athlete with a vaporizer. Um, there's no combustion. Uh, this is actually health Canada approved. It's the stores in big old mighty. That's what I use. Um, uh, when I'm portable. And then again, they have a whole bunch of other stuff, um, when I'm at home, but again, no combustion, no, uh, none of the butane with a lighter. Um, it's the healthiest way to, uh, administer cannabis to my body. Um, whereas again, the first line medicines, uh, which might be fine for other people. Again, this is not me saying you can't use, uh, uh, pills. I'm saying I should be able to use plants. And, uh, not only do I, I say that, but also, uh, my family doctor and the subsequent doctors that I've been working with, um, that medical cannabis is right for me as both patient and athlete. And that's what I've been fighting for. And, uh, you know, Good for you again, fighting for others as well. Last thing I'll leave this, um, in a perfect world, I guess, where do you see the landscape of the sports world, uh, related to medical cannabis, let's say in five years from now? Uh, it's looked at no different than any other medicine and, uh, being able to be used by athletes so they can compete at a level playing field, like everyone else. Good stuff. Again, congrats. Keep the message going forward. I really appreciate you taking the time and, uh, Keep fighting, brother. Everybody loves watching you. And uh, again, big monumental moment, obviously, this past weekend. And I'm sure there's a lot of people applauding you and uh, the success that you've had in the uh, message that you're trying to get through. Thank you so much. Together right. we grow. All right. Thanks, Elias.